Hello everyone. Um, so I'm taking a break from the shop. I said on previous videos I'd go over my um, saddle setup just to show you what I got, what I have. Uh, so we'll start off with the sticks. The sticks are DIY. Um, I did make them so they stack in line together. Very similar to, well, how they stack, similar to B sticks and the uh, shikars. Uh, so they're actually not, as you go up, they're not extending longer. Um, they're double steps. The main, there's four sticks that are made out of, that have um, API double sticks on them. Uh, the, all the tree standoffs are from Lone Wolf. The original Lone Wolf ones, like all on, on their single step ones. They're, they do okay. Um, if I was going to keep these, I would I would upgrade back to uh, Dano's tree steps. They are a little more expensive, but they give you a little bit more space away from the tree, so you get a little bit more foot room that way, and they also dig into the tree better, as well as that they're slotted, so you don't have to worry about them twisting or anything like that. I also have um, my Versa buttons are from Dano there at, Double, at uh, Eastern Woods Outdoors, so those are there. Um, my other, my one, my fifth step does have double steps, the angled ones, the original non-light white ones from Nano at Eastern Woods Outdoors. Uh, they're thinner, they're a little lighter than the double steps, but they're not too bad. I've, um, self-stripped all of them and the ones, and they all have pretty much, if I couldn't, if I didn't repurpose the original bolts that came with the stuff, like from the steps and everything, I use grade eight uh, nuts, washers, and all that. So, and I haven't had a, I haven't had a problem with them. Um, you know, haven't had any failures. Been up the tree several times with them. I'm a bigger dude, um, sitting right around 290 or so, something like that. I built these back when I was way heavier, and still didn't have an issue with them. I also did build in. Um, three single step eaters with them. I'll pop the, one of these off. Um, that ain't one. But uh, I also integrated little loops uh, so I can hook onto my saddle and carry them up. So they're not, not too bad, but here's one of the, same with this one, integrated it in there. Um, these little tape things, they didn't really, I don't know, they're okay. They didn't really last all that long. But I integrated, this is, um, the webbing's actually uh, from tree straps. From, uh, I think they're, I can't remember what set of sticks, but they're strap, buckle straps for a set of sticks that I repurposed, put a water knot in here, fished it up in, and the water knot is actually sitting over the bolt that goes for the tree, the, for the standoff. Now, we'll go, since I got this one here, you can see there's two different separate bolts. That's what makes it um, so you can stack these in lines because the step here is away, or the standoff is away from the step. So it just sits straight down. Um, and then back to the, to these. This, it's just a rubber hose for a washer that I cut down and then did a cobra tie on them or a cobra weave on them. Um, they do okay. It's not bad. I mean, it's definitely comfortable. It gives me, I think an extra, um, I think 12, 15 inches or something like that. Oh, their overall length of these are 24 inches. I'm sorry, I'm a little rambling, bouncing from thing to thing, but the overall length is 24 inches. And the step spacing from this step to this step is 22 and three quarter inches, which is a little, I'm six two, but I'm a bigger dude. And especially when I get layered up, it's a little too much for me. So I am actually gonna get rid of these or I'm gonna try to get rid of them. If I can't, um, then I'm gonna cut them down and move the bottom step, step up a little bit more, a couple more inches and make them 20 inches overall. And that should cut my spacing down to about 18 inches or something like that. I'm going to leave the Versa button alone. The Versa button from the top is about seven inches, seven and three quarters or something like that. 
So that's it for the, oh, the sticks overall, with the, cause there's, I got three single step eighters attached to three of the sticks. The way they're set up right now, five sticks, they lay, weigh 11 and a half pounds. So really, and, they're, and that's, you know, that ain't bad. I mean, really, really, I don't think that's bad at all. So we'll set this stuff up here and move this stuff up here. Oh, yeah, I guess. So what I do for tying the sticks to the trees, I use the quarter inch rope mod. Uh, I did make uh, three, I think it's, yeah, it's three sixteenths inch um, amp steel daisy chain that I'm gonna try with either my platform or my, well, we'll get to that part, or the one of the sticks, I haven't sure. I've tried them in the 764s. There, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I haven't didn't have any problem with them, even though like, you know, the working load of them is right around 300 pounds. So I'm kind of, you know, personally, I just like the quarter inch AM steel rope mob better. I just, I don't know, I just, I like doing them. It's easy for me and they're ridiculously strong. So I don't have to worry about it at all. All right, so let's, since we'll do the sticks. All right, and so, and of course those are all DIY, so is my platform. This is my platform that I used. Um, it's a Lone Wolf, yeah, I believe it's a Lone Wolf seat um, that I put on, uh, I think it's inch and a half tubing that I got from Eastern Woods Outdoors. And I also got the, the I think I got the brackets from me there or from Lone Wolf, one or the other, I can't remember. Um, but the tubing, the cam, cam over strap got from Eastern Woods Outdoors from Dano. Um, I just did a basic wrap of, uh, cordage around here. Um, I don't, you know, I just did it. I thought it looked nice and I thought it'd be able to be better feel the edge, maybe a little bit more comfortable. What else? I also, what I did is, um, I just took a, yeah, it's either three quarter inch or an inch dowel rod and hammered it down the center there. So I don't know, like from what everything I've read, everybody said, you know, put a, you can put a piece of wood down there and help from the platform crushing, you know, into it. But what I also did is I found this little rubber boot thing here, right there where the screw adjustment is. And that's another nice thing about this is you can level the seat out. See, I have mine tilted a little bit, but uh, as far as the DIY platform, I mean, it's, I think it's right around four pounds, so it's not bad. So we're up to um, just over 15 pounds so far between platform and the five sticks. Now you don't have to use the five sticks. I have, and I get decent height out of it. I haven't measured or anything. Uh, and then as far as the, I can't remember, oh, I did move the measuring tape. So, the, I'm sure everybody has done this, but the overall length of the, or the width of the, at the widest point is, you know, 14 inches, something like that. And then from the post to the front is about 11 inches. And then uh, the post itself is about a foot long, something like that. I might as well measure this. Yeah, that's an inch and a quarter yeah that way and that way so it's an inch and a quarter also stealth strip that so i wear size 12 13 boots so the platform is big enough it just doesn't have a whole ton of room it's really secure i like it um it took a minute to get used to making the getting it canned over because a lot of, a lot of times what i um i was worried about was camming it too much and breaking the cast but that's just me um so now on to the saddle i guess uh, i don't know if any of you guys have watched the i actually do have a build series on this i call this a, the yuri um pretty sure i can't remember what it means i think it's uh ghost or something like that um it is a pretty pretty big saddle um it's got the mil spec um, mesh on it as stretches and I do have one one bag from Dano uh, Eastern Woods Outdoors 
it's fleece. I like it. This is what I keep my tether in. I do have a pretty short tether. Um, let's just bring this out here. It's, um, well, of course I have it balled up, but this is my tether. I mean, it's, there's not much. It's an old, it's an old, uh, from a regular tree stand harness. And I have my rope man and I have um, my Prusik. So that goes on my right side. That's the only thing I keep in there. And of course I have it attached. I, um, you, I got the option with their sliders and it just goes up through my, my um, webbing here, my mole strap or the molly loops. On my left side, of course, I have my lineman's belt, and this is a homemade, this is a DIY um, sis hauler or dump pouch, whatever. It's actually just made out of some, I think they're old pair of jeans and stuff. So, and, and of course, it's mesh. And so far, I like it. Um, I keep, I did get, uh, I did buy this one. I did have a different one, but again, I have the, um, rope man on there and I like having a longer um, lineman's, lineman's rope just because it I, gives me more room more options for different trees and stuff I'm a bigger dude so you know got the belly and everything so I like being away from the tree sometimes a little bit and then and also in my my left side pocket I got my DIY um, his strap so these aren't very hard to make. Um, I can't remember. I don't think I ever did a build video on it. Maybe I did, I don't know. But they're very easy to make. You don't have to have anything special as far as machine because you're not gonna be, this isn't load rated. So you do not hang off this, you know. Um, I also have a hero clip on it and a couple other, these plastic clips that hang different stuff. Oh, you know what I did forget is my uh, seat cushion. What I do when I have this hanging around, I attach a seat cushion to this bottom hook, and this that's what I use for my knees, like leaning when I'm sitting against the tree, and it works out great. I don't have to fumble around or anything. I don't have to strap it. I just run my, my strap around, hang it straight down in front of me. I put my bow off to my left. Um, bag is kind of centered to the right a little bit, depending on the situation. But I hang this down like this and I put my, my uh, seat cushion, just a regular seat cushion, I, and I, that's what I use for, the, for my knees. And it ended up working out pretty good. Um, so we'll pop all this stuff back in here. All right, so, and then, of course, uh, this is two inch webbing for the main, for the main frame of it is two inch seat belt webbing, which is rated at 6,000 pounds. It's got a two inch coper buckle. Uh, I do got two sliders here because neither side is strapped down. And this is what I got for my waist right now, which I wear around, around a 40 inch waist. Um, well, yeah, it's in Wrangler, so Wranglers are a little tighter. But this definitely could go back way out to, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of strap on each side, so there's definitely going to be, you definitely could fit somebody that is probably a 46, 48 inch west, waist without layering up and still layer up and still have enough room for this to sit, you'd be able to sit in and be comfortable. Um, so I have my Lyman's loops here, there. That's just got uh, one inch tubular webbing going through there. Um, of course, I have my quarter inch full berry am steel um, bridge and I did make um, the comfort channels like tether uh, which has a is still like I said is part of two inch main webbing my mistakes when I did this so just to be straight up I mean they still work they still pinch down on everything just fine is that I was really concerned for some reason about making these nice and tight together and make them look just super clean. That is a problem because you do not need to have them super tight. You have, I used this much space for six Delrin balls. 
So, and that's probably about four inches, something like that. And I have another two inches on either side. So what I need should have done is spaced that out so it actually gives more of a channel. Because you can see when you pinch those together, it really, there ain't a whole lot of room there, but it still works. The other thing is, is the, the tubular webbing that goes over top of this. Really, I think next time if I do this again with the comfort channels, I'm gonna try to do it with three quarter inch tubular webbing. That way it gets a little, I don't know, if not this part, at least the lime and loop part of it, because this seems a little flat. It's just personal preference more than anything. Um, so, and then we'll flip it around here, get back to my, my leg loops are, again, they're one inch tubular webbing. Um, the only thing about this is this, honestly, this is the only part that isn't load rating and that's because I'm using the G hooks from Mill Spike Monkey. So that's the only thing on this saddle that isn't load rating. And these I left long enough to, yeah, I mean, they're, they're super long. So I guess we can go over, um, Oh, yeah, I guess I can tell you about the construction a little bit more. So, so we got the two inch main webbing there. That's the main, your main chassis, okay? And then on the inside here, this is where my leg loops attached. I made it an orange one inch tubular webbing. So it's easy to see and it just hooks on right there. So on the lower portion, um, besides having the, wet, the, the mesh, we have uh, well, actually, in this section, I can't remember how far back this goes, but there is two layers or three layers of one inch tubular webbing, a layer of mesh, and the layer of two inch seat belt webbing. So that's a pretty thick assembly, especially for the machine I have, which is a Omega walking foot. And I've done, I've done a couple videos on that. Well, I've done one video overall on it and then a couple different things, sewing stuff up with it. Um, for having a three eight inch, three eighths of an inch presser foot height, it doesn't, I mean, it was pushing it. That's, this is the max and it was, you know, um, that it just uh, power wise, it's fine. It's just the capacity to get the, all that material under there. So that fell back out. Zip that back up. Um, and then the main upper portion, again, it actually has, the upper portion has two layers of the two inch webbing, the mesh, and then one layer of the one inch tubular webbing. So all this assembly is fairly thick and it's definitely sturdy. Everything was sewn up with a uh, size 92 thread from the thread exchange, so good quality th thread from a good good place to get it from. So the overall size of this, and I'm pretty comfortable in it. So we'll get some rough dimensions here from, I think, from, and I did a whole build series on this. So if some of the stuff is kind of off, uh, you can go back and reference that. But from top to bottom, this is right around 14 and a half inches. And then from length to length there, is 25 something like that and then the corners is eight so i did rough loosely model this after the tethered phantom um sort of i kind of just um uh, oversized it i do have like i said i have a series of videos on what, how i built this and also a build thread on the saddle hunter form now my biggest uh, well, this weighs right with the ropes, everything on this, this is right at four pounds. So we're up to five sticks of platform, 19 pounds. Honestly, wearing this in and carrying the sticks and everything, like it just doesn't really feel like a whole lot. Uh, the biggest improvement I've had for my saddle hunting is this. This is a DIY backband. You can buy almost all the manufacturers of saddles 
have back bands. They're not that hard to put together. Uh, I don't have any of my sewing stuff set up. So this is the route I went to make this more comfortable for me. I, at first I had some trouble being comfortable. I would stand up, I would sit down, stand up, sit down. I had a hard time being comfortable for a longer period of time. This has changed that for me. And this, if you don't have a sewing machine and if you don't feel like buying it from somebody or whatever, for whatever they charge, I don't, I haven't looked at them just because this is what I did. So this is a kidney belt for, um, a, it's a military kidney belt for backpack frames. And what's nice about this is you still get the adjustability because what I did was I took a string of 550 paracord, probably about two feet long, and I tied a knot on each end where the, where the clasp comes together. You can't do it anymore, but that's what I did. And then I hooked the 550 paracord into my carabiner on my, for my tree tether. And so we'll just slip this on. And this is, and I just put it in there and there we go. And it's just like that. And it gives a world of support and it's a world of difference. And the nice part about this is when you're hooked up, it still has the straps on it, so you can still adjust it. So this is nice, simple, and easy. Um, I think this, the, the kidney belt here was, I think around 18 bucks shipped or something like that. So it's, you know, it's not super cheap, but it is cheaper than the manufactured ones. And it's really easy and really DIY. Like it's as easy as it can get. And this is, takes up very little space and really doesn't, I did a few ounces, you know, it's not, it's not like a pound or anything like that. I don't think. So there's that. So, um, that's my overall saddle setup. Now I do have one thing to else to show you because I did say I am working on getting rid of those. I am also possibly going to let the saddle go as well. So if there's any of you bigger fellas out there that want to try saddle hunting and want something right now, I'm not going to make any more of these, these saddles for right now until I get my machine room set up to do that. Um, so this one, I'm going to put this up on a couple different, uh, forums and Facebook groups. So if you hang out in the same saddle hunter stuff type mobile hunting groups I do, that will be up there, same with the sticks. So uh, if I can't get rid of the sticks, like I said, I am gonna cut them down and make them a little shorter, make them a little bit better for me and just for make it more comfortable, more safe for me because I, I have to go like that. I have to tilt over to get my leg up there. It is what it is. I know I'm 6'2". I should be able to do it, but I can't. Um, so the platform, I'm not sure if I'm going to get rid of that yet or not because I got this bad boy for a heck of a good price. It was, you know, it was too, it was too good of a deal to pass up. So this is a mission platform by Trophy Line. And... This is going to be my new platform. It is a little bit bigger, uh, weighs a pound or so more than the DIY one. And of course the DIY one has, you know, that's the weight with the buckle and everything. Um, I'm also going to run either a quarter inch rope mod, AM steel roof mod or something like that. I'm just going to be something AM steel or, you know, something's going to be buckleless on this. So, and that's because it's got the bursa button on there. So we'll do a little side by side compare it. Well, just bottom of the platform. Yeah. So it's it's gonna have a little bit more room. And I and I I really can't wait to try it out. I haven't tried it out yet. Uh, from what I've noticed, the this differs from the original trophy or lone wolf one is because of this hump right here. Supposedly, they're going to work on that, but I don't know. Um, at some point in time, when I do get my sewing machine set back up, 
I am going to work on a pack for this similar to the Predator pack for Tethered's platform. And that way it can, and it, that way it can be, you know, comfortable to carry because a lot of people complain about this hump here. So when I make my pack, I'll probably have something, um, even if it's just thicker padding in here something like that so it's even across so this part isn't digging in but it just all depends like if that's what you're if you're going really minim minimalist style and you're just going to carry sticks on a platform and no backpack or anything like that then yeah that'll be the better option is to make something so it's padded here and makes this even going across if you have a backpack or something like that um then honestly i wouldn't worry about it because you're going to have other stuff in your backpack so it won't, shouldn't be that bad so, like I said, this is, uh, this is my saddle setup. So, uh, I can't remember if some of you guys wanted to see it or not, but this is what I got. So, all together, um, you know, my saddle setup to get up the tree is about 15 pounds. And I'm good with that. Or wait, no, it would be 11, 15, 19 pounds. Like 19 pounds, something like that. So... I'm, you know, I think that's, that's not bad at all because I got an XOP, uh, I think it's a Vanish or something like that. The stand itself weighs 10 pounds. So if, which, you know, well, five sticks and that, I mean, it'd be a little bit more, but not much. But anyway, so this is it. If you guys got any questions about anything, uh, on any of this stuff, like I said, I do have a build series on the saddle. I don't have a build series on the sticks or the DIY platform. But like I said, I do have uh, a write-up on the Saddle Hunter forum and um, a video series on this channel for the saddle. So thanks for watching. I hope this answers some questions. Hopefully it didn't raise too many questions like uh, as far as well, if you are confused about anything, like I said, um, don't hesitate to ask and I'll do the best I can to get back with you. Uh, like I said, thanks for watching and stopping by and checking out my stuff. All right, we'll see you.